At first glance, I thought this would be something to do with the London Metropolitan Police, as Scotland Yard, complete with their spinny sign that you see on the news, is their headquarters. Weirdly, it's not. Directly, at least. This game is based on a board game that I had no idea existed, which was based on the Met Police, although they expanded it to feature in five worldwide cities. The game required at least three players, you play a bunch of them in the video game, but you could have up to six. Essentially, one player controlled Mr. X, a criminal whose location is mostly secret, only being revealed occasionally, and it's down to the others as detectives to capture him. All the players can move around London via taxis, buses, the tube, and Mr. X can also use a ferry. The game is a weird one, ending if a detective captures Mr. X, or if he manages to remain uncaught by the time there are no possible moves left. All in all, it's one of those games where you have to study and revise before you start playing. There are a lot of rules, move regulations, and other doodads that mean you're probably not going to break this one out at family game night. It's more for people who are really into the gaming hobby. How does this all translate to the game? Well, Mr. X is controlled by the CPU and, like the board game, is only periodically visible. You have a team of three detectives, for some reason called police dogs. You can move your pieces one square each per turn. Landing on an arrow forces you to move that way. This can be used to your advantage. Landing on a train station gives access to those train lines. In future moves, you can move along the track in either direction to the next station. The game has nice-looking cutscenes detailing the famous landmarks of the city you're in, but that doesn't carry over to the game itself, which is a rather mundane tile format with everything in the game represented by icons. It's quite jarring how the camera darts around between characters and is at times hard to track what is actually occurring. There's barely any text in-game, which might help for translation purposes, but definitely hinders the game progress. A strange choice for a video game of a board game. All I can imagine is that Scotland Yard was more popular in Japan than it was here. Thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on the game down below, and if you can spare a second, give the review a quick thumbs up, it really helps out. Subscribe to the Portable Power Podcast for a new Game Boy review every day from Monday to Friday. Or alternately, new episodes of the podcast drop every Saturday and Sunday on whichever platform you get your pods. See you later on.